Thank you for coming today to join us for our homecoming service. The Lord has blessed our church in many ways through the years and with many special and gifted people. Today, as we celebrate our 97th year of existence, we want you to sit back and enjoy a brief history, a small snapshot, if you will, of Good View Baptist Church. Just listen as I read the business meeting minutes from Diamond Hill Baptist Church, dated May 14, 1921. Diamond Hill Church was called to order for the transaction of business Saturday afternoon, before the third Sunday in May. Building a new Baptist church was discussed, and it was voted on unanimously to build. Sunday following, a lot was voted on and decided to build just this side of the Goodview Station. We extended a call to Brother Moses for another year, putting his salary at 200 per year. In a day and time when many churches trace their beginnings to a church split, Goodview Baptist was a church plant of Diamond Hill Baptist Church. The bulletin on the screen is from the early 1970s. This is what our church looked like from around the early 20s to the early 70s, at which point our new sanctuary was erected. We are thankful to, for the vision of the people of Diamond Hill Baptist Church. In the early days of our church existences, people walked to church. Had it not been for this church plant, many people in our area would not have been able to attend church because the walk to Diamond Hill area in those days was too far to travel. In the 97 years of our history, we have been blessed with 10 senior pastors. Samuel Moses, R. L. Chadwick, L. C. Kaufman, Reverend Holland, J. V. Ashwell, Toby Salmons, Elwood McQuaid, Charlie Jones, Bob Lafon, and Joey Phillips. Each man has brought his own style, but also at the same time, we realize that each man also built upon the same foundation of the Word of God. Today, Goodview Baptist Church continues to build on that foundation of the Word of God and godly men and women who have served here through the years. Philippians 1 6 reads, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. For those of you who have attended and served here, know that one day you will stand before the Lord, knowing that you have played a vital role in the work he has been doing here at Goodview Baptist Church. At first glance, this picture may look like those who attended Goodview in the old days, at the very beginning of our existence. But this photo was actually taken in the 1960s at an old-fashioned day at our church. If you look closely, the gentleman at the top left of the picture was our guest speaker for the day, Reverend Jerry Falwell. In the early 1970s, God began to put on the hearts and minds of the congregation here at Goodview the need for a new sanctuary and Sunday school building. Pictured here are Pastor Bob Lafon, Tut Jones, and Irma Metter. They are standing outside of our old sanctuary for the last time. The following day, the demolishing of the old building would take place, and soon after, the new building would be erected. The new sanctuary was dedicated on June 1, 1975. God had blessed our church with many skilled carpenters and others with construction knowledge. Most of what you see standing now was built by the hard work and generosity of our congregation at that time. The loan for the entire project was only around $10,000. Awana stands for Approved Workmen Are Not Ashamed. This Wednesday night youth program has been the catalyst for many people in our church to become involved in ministry. Over the past 40 plus years, hundreds and hundreds of young people have learned God's word and many are involved in ministry in their churches today. Picture it as one of those Awana clubbers that is still actively involved in ministry at our church today. Anyone recognize Tracy McLean with our former pastor, Bob Lafon? Gary Jenny has been involved with the Awana program since its inception. He and Sarah were the first couple married in our new sanctuary. Here's an aerial view of our church and what it looked like in 1985 when the church welcomed its current pastor, Joey Phillips. For many years, our bulletins were not run off of copier machines, but a mimograph machine. Here is the inside of the bulletin from Sunday, June 30th, 1985, our pastor's first Sunday.
This picture was taken from one of our church services in the early 90s. Do you see any people you recognize? Springs of Life Camp in Patrick Springs, Virginia helped mold the lives of many young people, many of whom grew up here in Goodview. Pastor Lafon was instrumental in the operation of the Camp Week. In July of 1986, the camp honored Pastor Lafon and his family with a memorial bell. Pastor Lafon would ring the bell each morning before devotions, prayer, and breakfast. This was a fitting tribute to a godly man who served the Lord and has now gone home to be with him. Our church has been involved in supporting missionaries for many years. John Marchbanks was a great Bible teacher and taught God's Word in churches, prisons, small groups, and wherever the opportunity arose. John and his wife, Neil, would minister here at Goodview on a regular basis. He was truly a man who knew the Bible well and lived it. In a little over 10 years, our church was able to retire the debt on our new church building. Pictured here at the note-burning service are Kathleen Powers, Sarah Janney, Leela McLean, Sis Carner, Leroy Collins, A.C. Dickerson, and Donald Morgan. Donald Morgan had the privilege of burning the mortgage note as Pastor Joey and Emma Metter look on. One of the early acts of God that were evident in the mid-80s was the purchase of a 12-passenger van. The price of the van, the giving to the van, and the terms of the van was definitely a God thing. We bought the van from the Mormon headquarters in Salem. After the purchase, we thought it needful to have a dedication and cleansing service. This van served us well for many years. From carrying people and supplies to the peaks of otter, to many youth activities and everything in between, we made good use of this van for many years. By this van, several were brought to church seeking the Lord, and they left in the same van, having found Him at our service. Who was in the choir in the 1990s? From left to right, starting on the back row, Joan Crowder, Irene Morgan, Dave Fowler, Leroy Collins, Perry Forbes, Joy Hannabas. On the front row, Annabelle Ayers, Karen Whitaker, Kelly Phillips, Joe Lyle, Marianne Fowler, and Darlene Metter. Do Gary Janney, Leroy Collins, Cleo Phillips, Joe Lyle, and Francis Collins really believe that they are angels? You be the judge. The Awana tradition continued. Pictured here is Mike Chittam receiving his award from Pastor Joey as Gary Janney looks on. Mabry Hill is a tourist destination. Many traveled the Blue Ridge Parkway to see this mill. This picture is one from our early senior adult outings. Sharing Christ and praying for others outside our church is an aspect of ministry all church members should be involved in. That would include hospital visitation. Here are two of our deacons that are visiting with Lee Smith and a patient who is in the room with him. For many years, our church ministered at the Bedford County Nursing Home in Bedford. Mr. Harris was always present and an encouragement to all who joined us in this ministry. Our church has always valued youth. Here is one of our youth outings to Bridgewater Plaza to play golf. Some of the youth pictured here are Sam and Cody Whitaker, Patrick Atkins, Tiffany Adams, Caleb Brown, Michelle Piercy, Andrea Fowler, and Courtney Chapelier. Activities are fun, but our youth have always been involved in ministry as well. Youth services are a blessing as we see the giftedness of our young people in action. Why did people call Leela McLean the strawberry lady? Because almost everything in her home had a strawberry theme, from her carpet, to her dishes, to her silverware, to her quilts. No one ever wore the name better. A blast from the past. Lewis Chatton, Sharon Wood, Kathy Chatton, and Bill Barton. Before the Family Life Center was built, all our church fu functions and Awana ministry was held in the basement of the church. Who can remember walking around and dodging the support poles in the basement? One of our special outings was to Pilot Mountain, North Carolina. Not only was the view fantastic, but we also had the opportunity to hear from one of our favorite evangelists, John Racy. John ministered to our church many times through the years. Can you put these names with the right faces? John Macy, Charlotte, Mert, Tracy, Jatana, Kelly, Charlotte, Pat, Joan, and Leroy. John and his wife Charlotte are special people to our church family. John still lives in King, North Carolina, 
but because of poor health, he's not able to preach anymore. John was the type of guy who could preach the paint off the walls. Leela is seen here making Easter decorations with Eric and Valina Tiller. And of course, none of us will ever forget the trip to Washington, D.C., and watching our van go on the wrong road several times in an attempt to pick up our church passengers. Who can forget going to Charlotte, North Carolina to hear Billy Graham? Standing in the rain, getting soaked, only to have the rain stop just before the crusade started. If you don't believe we got wet, just ask Judy Atkins. Two special Davids in the life of our church, David Fowler and David Jackson. Both are with the Lord now. Carl and Lynn Higginbotham would often have groups down from the church at their property. Here is one of the men's fellowships enjoying one of their get-togethers. Can you spot Earl Bishop, Paul Sutherland, Steve Hypes, Jim Lye, Tim Farnham, Carl Higginbotham, Sammy Brown, Chris Smith, Sammy Chalfinch, and William Hardison? In the August of 1998, we had our homecoming meal under the white and yellow tent. We would soon break ground for the Family Life Center. Our plans were to have the homecoming service in the Family Life Center the following year. Unfortunately, we miscalculated by three years. Pictured at the meal on the left side of the table, Banks Crowder, Nita and Junior Harmon, Katherine Ferguson, and David Esterling. On the right side of the table, Jim Lyle, Agnes and Earl Bishop, Peggy Easterling, and Patsy and Paul Sutherland. Here's the bulletin from that homecoming service in 1998. In Nehemiah chapter 2, Nehemiah goes to Jerusalem after the city had been desolate for 70 years. Seeing the condition of the city and following the leading of the Lord, Nehemiah said, You see the trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins. Its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. We use this passage to formulate our model for the building of our Family Life Center. The theme was, Rise Up and Build. We didn't use the theme from the movie Field of Dreams, which says, If you build it, they will come. But build it we did, and the people did come, and continue coming. To God be the glory. On June 9, 2002, our church celebrated its 80th anniversary. We also had the dedication service of our Family Life Center. We met in the sanctuary at 9 a.m. for our first service with John Racy. This was also the time we began having two worship services. After the service, we made our way over to the Family Life Center for the ribbon-cutting ceremony. Southern Gold provided a concert for, for us, and then at 10.15 a.m., Jimmy Jones brought our first message and our completed Family Life Center. Some of the members of our building committee seen here in the photo from left to right are Clark Brown, Bob Rood, Chris Walker, Leroy Collins, David Fowler, Junior Harmon, Earl Bishop, Mike Hawley, Tony Price, and Jerry Dillon. Five years after the completion of our Family Life Center, we were able to retire our debt. Payments of around $6,500 were made each month. The funds came from people in our church and their giving above their regular giving. The average amount was $65 a month. Pictured our Earl Bishop and the chairman of our deacons, Paul Sutherland, burning our mortgage note. Members of the building committee look on with great joy. W.A. Stratton & Company out of Appomattox, Virginia was our major contractor. But the people of our church also gave many hours to help out where they could and save our church money. Skilled workers like Josh Hilton and Junior Harmon are only a small sample of the many people within our church who pitched in to give help. Our church regularly takes mission trips. It's great to visit with our missionaries and help them in, with the work that God has called them to do. This was a photo from our first trips in the 1990s. We traveled to Jamaica to work with Christian Caribbean Center for the Deaf. This trip went to Shooters Hill, Jamaica. 20 people from our church made this trip to, to help begin the construction on a factory for the deaf. This would be a place where they could work after graduation. Many families and individuals have found Goodview Baptist Church a place to call home. It was here that many received Christ as their Savior. Many have also grown and been developed in their relationship with Christ, and many have been equipped to serve in the ministry of this church and beyond. 
A small sampling of these people include William and Brenda Hardison, Chris Walker and Bobby Hannabas, Pete Dooley, Jamie and Valerie Archiwal and their children Ivy and Aaron, Joan Rood, Sis Carner, and Sherry Ayers. We hope that you have or will experience the love that's evident here at Goodview Baptist Church, the love that we have for the Lord and the love we have for one another. Thank you for being a part of our 97th homecoming celebration.